Wrapping up this week's look at the Titans Return Legends class is the one I think everyone was looking forward to when the wave was announced. I certainly was, because I have very fond memories of this toy from childhood and a need for more of these tiny little maws of teeth and hatred in my life. This is Titans Return Gnaw. The Sharktacon, straight from the planet Quintessa, or wherever the Quintessons happen to be shacked up as of this recording. As you can see, very, very much G1. He kind of follows Titan Returns kind of design scheme of we're going to stick as close to G1 as we can. He definitely has some modernization going on here, but for the most part, that is the demonic little mad ball that we know and love from the Transformers movie. This is just such... This is one of those toys you even hate to transform to robot mode because the beast mode has such character to it. Check this thing out. You can see a lot of it is cast in various shades of gray plastic with a lot of bright blue going through as well and hits of purple and pink to keep the design interesting. Not that you need much to keep it interesting. It's pretty horrifying as a, as a little tiny demonic robot monster. I like the eyes. That translucent look to the eyes. Now I should tell you the entire face of this guy is translucent yellow plastic. That's a ton of paint uh, covering it over to make it look right. Also those eyes can be translucent. Now I'll tell you, yes my hatred of translucent plastic continues, but this doesn't seem to be bearing any kind of like long term stress that it has me worried. So long as he's not in shark mode for years on end, I don't think there's much problem here. Not that <laughs> I'm sure a lot of collectors will leave him in shark mode, but, you know, that's their decision. But for the most part, I really like how it was done. The colors are really good. I like how much paint went into this, varying different colors. And the gray matches the plastic color almost spot on. It's very, very hard to tell the difference, even in bright light. So good on you, Hasbro. I like it. Looking through the rest of the toy, we do have some articulation points. The arms do hinge up and down. I do not like how it's oval shaped though i understand it's more detail accurate but it creates this weird lip when you raise the arms up and down at the hinge it's not terrible you're probably not going to notice most of the time but it's a little bit of annoyance that i think could have been easily fixed he also has a permanent little bend here to his leg so he has the correct proportions in this mode so you have a knee and a hip that work pretty well all things considered Ball joints in both that give him plenty of range of motion. And, of course, he has his signature spiked tail with little bits and spikes all over. All around, really nice toy. And I like how closed up it is. Even on the belly, you can't really tell where the robot begins on this outside of, like, exposed hips like there. And for those wondering, I don't ever point these out, but all these new toys seem to have these little hexagon pegs. That plugs into your Tamashi stages. It plugs into... Uh, the Figma stands, pretty much any generic toy display stand will fit that peg. And I love that they put one under the jaw so it could have just like like in midair jumping poses and give you a lot more range. Aside from actual uh, articulation you would expect, he also has a few more points which you need for a Sharktacon. Namely, his mouth does hinge up and down not only at the top but at the bottom as well. At the bottom, you'll also find a couple of pegs interestingly placed. Yep, this is how you mount a Titan Master in Gnaw, and this is kind of the most hilarious one yet. You literally just have him ride inside Gnaw's mouth. I don't know if I would actually trust this or not. <laughs> this seems uh, just a wee bit risky. Just a little bit, I think. But it's hysterical. It is hysterical. This is where I think the designers just had a lot of fun with this concept. Because, number one, where else would you ride on a Sharktacon? He's got a big fin on the back. It's not like you can saddle him up. But at the same time, it's just so... It's so goofy. So goofy. And it doesn't... It means he has a place for a Titan Master to ride without really interfering with his overall look. Which is a very big plus. So let's get him to robot mode. So we can actually see what his overall look is. First we take the tail off. And then we have to uh, basically unfold him in half. We can 
split his face open like so and undo the pegs that keep him intact. Completely unfold the demented little ball and then rotate his face to the back of what has now become his legs. We can go ahead and move the arms down as well just to move all the kibble back into the same spot. The arms double hinge up to the top of his torso like so. Jaw comes down like that. We'll rotate forearms to get him into position. And then go around to the back so we have uh, all the room we need to flip up his head, rotate around, tuck his uh, big fin toward the back. And with very little effort at all, we have Gnaw in his full-on robot mode. This is where proportions get a little bit interesting because he is very close to how the G1 toy looked. It was very big and bulbous body. Though we do have a few changes. He doesn't have the big, he doesn't have the scrawny purple legs that kind of jut out from his midsection. Uh, he has full-on very strong-looking legs for a change. Though he does still uh, get a little bit questionable proportion-wise. For starters, we're going to take a look at the head, which does look very much G1 gnaw. I'm very happy with the head and the sculpt there. He kind of looks like Brawn if Brawn was a Decepticon. That's about uh, as close to a definition as I can get. Not that you ever really take a look at the gnaw head. It's, it's almost always the Sharkticon mode you see. But still, they did a really nice job. I like that they captured it so well. Looking again at his robot mode overall, you can see his shoulders set fairly low down on the torso. His head is a little bit large, which... Sharktacons, even the G1 toy, did have a pretty large noggin for the rest of his body, so that I don't really begrudge it too much. And he is a Sharktacon, so the big bulbous body is kind of in line with the design of uh, of the original. I think the only thing bugging me for real is just how low his shoulders sit on his torso. That's a little bit distracting if you look at it for too long, but I guess you could get over it in time. We get a lot more light blue here for the... Uh, the arms now showing through and more upward where a lot more of the light blue has been centered. You also get a little bit of paint for the light blue there at the feet and some more pink hitting the thighs, giving you a little bit of the original leg color from the G1 toy. Where all the kibble went is a little bit interesting. It, it does give him a ton of balance, but it all kind of ends up on the back of his legs, which is going to hinder the legs a little bit when you start to pose. Speaking of... One thing I don't like about how the toy comes together is this permanent knee bend that he has. This is as straight as it gets. The plastic is really thick in that area and just even carving it off to give him more range in the knee would be a little bit tricky without really interfering with the robot. It seems like in order to create that beast mode and to make it as smooth and solid looking as possible, things like this were done these kind of sacrifices were made, which is unfortunate, but at the same time, I have to admit, when it comes to a Sharktacon, when it comes to Gnaw, the mode I want them to get right is the Beast mode. Because really, when you think about Sharktacons, you rarely think about the robot. You rarely think about Gnaw. You think about a massive pile of teeth and two big demented eyes gunning for you. That's a Sharktacon. This, this is just the, the thing it has to be because it's also a Transformer character, now, isn't it? But for the most part, they did a decent job on him. He looks like the G1 toy. That's about as much as I could hope for. So, we can go ahead and peg in his weapon. It's a strange little way of holding a mace, but at the same time, hey, it's a Sharktacon. I'm not going to question what he wants to demolish with. So for the articulation, the head rotates all the way around, left and right, all the way to the back, full range. Ball joints at the elbows and shoulders, just like he was in robot mode. Plenty of good range there, though also with the arms, there is again a permanent bend to him, which is a little bit annoying, but it doesn't bother me as much as the legs do. I'm not even sure why, it just doesn't. So full range of motion there, thanks to ball joints, ball joints at the hips as well. You do get a little bit of hindrance thanks to the big faces on the back of his legs, but it's not a terrible amount. It's just a little bit of visual distraction when you start to notice, oh right, half his robot, uh, half his beast mode is just hanging off of his heels. At least you do get a decent knee bend should you need it, and at least the thigh swivel is, or the, the ball joint and the hip is pretty good. Not a massive amount of articulation. 
I get again, I get the feeling that pretty much all the thought and effort went into what is essentially the correct mode for all the thought and effort to go into. The robot does enough just to count as a G1 gnaw, but it's really that beast mode that you're looking for, and I think they did it a good job on that. So that is Titan's Return Gnaw. As a Shark Decon, he is spectacular as a little robot man. He does have some proportion flaws and a little bit of a lack of articulation compared to some of his others. But for the most part, you want that beast mode to be good, and I think the beast mode is great. And doing it at a Legends class, you could want that gigantic ball of teeth, but at the same time, I think the Legends class gives it the right affordability if you want to start stacking a bunch of these up on your toy shelves and man i know so many people who are going to have absolute swarms schools whatever you want to call it of these guys just all over their display shelves and i don't blame them in the least if i could easily find them i'd probably have three or four more of my own but for now it's nice to see the shark to back and it's nice to have him in pocket-sized form just in case I'm out and about and I need some I need something to bite someone's nose off at any moment trust me you'd be surprised how often I need that 